Yeah, the boys are back in town. Yeah, the boys are back in town. She's addicted to the melanin. Golden brown, golden brown. It's funny how the tables turn around. She told me to leave, she's missing me now. Operator, turn up the sound. Mix me down, mix me down. I told the world cause you can see it in my Hey love bugs and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> So today I'm going to be showing you guys how I accomplished my no foundation makeup look. Y'all, this look literally just consists of me doing my eyebrows, my lashes, and a lip combo. And that's it. No foundation. <laughs> and on the screen, as you can see, are all of the products that I will be using in this process. Down from the brow pomade to the setting spray, you guys. Don't forget to set the mood. This is the playlist that I'm using today. Before I officially get started, a trick that I'm going to use today is spraying my brow pomade with just a little bit of the setting spray. This will loosen the brow pomade up for me as well as help it to stay in place even more. So starting off with the groomed brows, holding the brush so the longer end is facing the opposite way, I'm going to make a clean line on my bottom brow. I'm going to carefully make the line by using light and gentle strokes while shaping it according to my natural brow shape. Now of course you can do whatever you want to do but this is what we're doing today. After starting the bottom part of my brow I'm going to do the same exact thing with the top part of my brow after connecting the top part to the bottom part of my brow I'm going to lightly fill in the empty spaces to give my brow a fuller look now I'm going to repeat those same steps on my other brow when I do my brows I do start at the beginning of my brows I only fill in the area that I believe needs it most the goal is to still make it look realistic this is also a trust the process kind of thing and I do check my brows every step of the way After I completed filling in my brows to my desired look and shape, I'm going to clean them up with some concealer and a concealer brush. So I'm just going to dab the concealer brush into my concealer brush <laughs> and begin working in the same order that I started in. On my bottom brow using light soft strokes, I'm going to create my line. This is a very important line so I do take my time and I advise you to take your time as well if you're following what I'm doing. After I'm satisfied with the line, I'm going to start blending it down in a lower motion using very small taps. Tapping, brushing down in a way how I'm doing it as you see. I use a concealer brush for this part because it gives me more control and a more precise look versus than just using the brush that the concealer comes with. But I do use that brush when I do my highlighting and contouring on my cheeks. So then I'm going to repeat these same steps to the top of the brow as well as the other side of the brow. I actually like to blend with this flat brush, but if I thought it needed a little bit more blending, I would take a small eyeshadow blending brush to blend the concealer even more. If I do notice anything out of place, I do go in and clean it up. So I did end up having trouble with this side of the brow, but I did end up cleaning it up. You guys will see in just a second exactly what I'm talking about. I am an eyebrows are identical twins kind of girl. So if they don't look alike, I keep cleaning up with the concealer or adding with the pomade till I get my desired look. So I'm going to make sure that I get what I'm looking for. So this is something that I did learn in makeup school. So I'm going to share it with you guys. The key to making a brow look more natural is to not fill it in fully. So you want to make sure there's like spots in it or just there's 
like don't fill your brow in all the way that's hence that's why i start in the pre basically i start in the middle of my brows and the beginning of my brows are my natural brows so all you you don't want to fill it in too much you want to fill it in just enough so that it still gives that natural look After cleaning up and getting both brows to look how I want them, I'm going to take a spoolie and brush the beginnings of my brows and the filled in parts together to give it a more natural look. Now this part is where I could have taken a blending brush as well and or some of my foundation to blend it in a little bit better. But instead I took a microfiber makeup cloth to wipe off any excess that I felt like needed to go away. But before I do that I do try to blend as much as possible before putting the powder on. Now I'm going to take this powder to set my concealer. I use the same concealer brush to apply and blend the powder as I did with the concealer. For a more precise blend, I'm going to take this powder brush and blend the discoloration away. To me, the brows are the most important part of any makeup look, so by taking my time on my brows, I get a clean look majority of the time. After all the blending is done, I'm going to fix up those small details that I may notice. I'm then going to go in with the spoolie again just to kind of clean up anything and fix any details that I feel are keeping the shape from being exactly how I want it. After finishing up my brows, I'm now moving on to the mystery lashes. Honestly, I have no idea what these lashes are called, but after I put the glue on them, I fan them so the glue dries up just a little bit, which I kind of didn't do for this first one, but I eventually fix it. Normally, I would apply the eyelashes with tweezers and go in and fix it up with my fingers, but this go around, I'm just going to use my fingers. There's really no technique to this, and whether you put the lashes on top or on bottom, slow and steady wins the race. Now I do try to get them as close to my lash line as possible. This is why I like try to take my time because I don't want to poke myself in the eye or anything like that. And I did used to put my lashes underneath. I made a whole video about it and everything and guess what your girl did? I deleted it. But anyways, I did used to do that but the lash band would get in my way and it would irritate my eyes. But this lash is an example of why I like to fan my lashes before applying them. The wet glue makes it hard for the lash to stick and when it dries, it's easier for you to just put it on there like it's a sticker and we love that okay i eventually did take it off and apply the next lash and then put it back on Now you can stop here and set your face or even just put some lip gloss on. I prefer clear, but you can do whatever you want to, girl. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to. But I'm going to do a black lip liner and a lip gloss combo. Starting off on clean wipe lips, I'm going to trace the lip liner around the shape of my lips. Now I could have made it darker, but I did still have like some gloss on. But that don't mean that I could not have made it darker. I was a little nervous because this is my first time trying black lip liner. I always do brown. I love the way brown looks on me. But I wanted to give this black one a try. So I was trying to not make it so pigmented so that it did not look. So that it kind of resembled brown. But honestly, I could have went darker with it. I feel like it would have still been cute if I would have went darker with it. Anyways, when tracing the top and bottom, I keep my mouth closed. 
but when I'm trying to connect the two or like when I'm working on the bottom I will slightly open my mouth just a little bit to blend it a little it's easy to use a brush but I didn't want it super blended so I just rubbed my lips together gently just smacking them up and down and now for the lip gloss look at that I already flawless I already just everyday makeup and you can always change your lashes to get whatever kind of style you want to but it just looks so good we're gonna see which ends are better smaller hoops or big hoops let's see I'm already not like it's not giving me enough this is the part where if i was actually going somewhere i would like get ready i am going to put some earrings on just to kind of make the look pop a little bit but i would not have my bonnet on i would have my hair done i would have an outfit i would have everything going on but honestly that is my everyday no foundation makeup look if i'm like i don't really want a lot of makeup on my face but i do want to look a little cute today not that i'm not already cute but you know what i mean i just want to pop a little bit i want to put some makeup on this is my go-to look It is time for the setting spray. You can do this before the lip gloss, but I always forget to do it before, so I just always do it afterwards. The point is, just make sure you put your setting spray on. But you guys, let me tell you this. So I have oily skin, and I've been using like this spray setting spray for as long as I can remember, but I think I'm gonna start investing into some powder to set my face. And then we'll see if my oils will be controlled throughout the entire day. Y'all should leave me some good powders that you guys may use or whatever because I do want to test that out. But that is it, you guys. That is the completed makeup look. I feel like it just turns out so good when you just be patient with it and you take your time and you blend. Blending and finding your colors is really the most important thing because you can always change your lashes up. You can always change the way that you want your brows to look. Please do not go outside with your bonnet. Like I said, I'm not going anywhere. I just want to just get this video out for you guys. Y'all can do your hair. When I do my get ready's with me, y'all see how I like really, really go out for the day. But anyways, I thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that this helped you and or inspired you to do your makeup. Because girl, go do your makeup. Go do your makeup. Starting your makeup. Go do it. But I don't have anything else to say, but I hope to catch you in the next one.